start this video not in the usual way. We actually aired this on Lisa's channel yesterday, but of course the powers that be decide nobody should see it once again. So out of the norm, the video crashes and dies, but it's simply because of the content within it. Devin Archer's eternity speaks out. Devin Archer believes strongly in the rule of law. Next week, Archer will speak for himself. Now, Devin Archer is a very close friend to the Biden family. One-time business associate served on the board with Hunter Biden, and he has the information that will bring down the White House. I've said this from day one. Now, his testimony has been delayed on multiple occasions, a third time to be more specific. It is incendiary. He is receiving threats, according to him. And why? Because he has the inside track. Hunter Biden's former associate and convicted felon, which I do state in the video, is reportedly cooperating with Republican lawmakers and will testify this week on a $10 million Ukrainian Biden bribery scheme. Mikola Slavchewski also referred to Joe Biden as the big guy in the FBI's FD-1023 form. Later today, news broke that Devin Archer will testify before the House Oversight Committee next Monday on this exact and specific finding but the story took a whole new twist yesterday it's why i wanted to get on here and give you an update Zelensky associate was present at the meetings that will be discussed by devin archer upwards of 12 times joe biden was put on the phone that goes contrary to what biden has stated that he is never aware of anything with his son now they're changing it and stating He's never been in business with his son. That is how incendiary this testimony is about to be. The concern is right here. President Zelensky, who now is holding blackmail information against Joe Biden. You heard this on Fox News if you watched yesterday. It's why we wanted to bring you this information yesterday, far ahead of anyone in the mainstream media, as usual. According to the author, Schweitzer, who wrote a best-selling Secret Empires and the Biden Family Crimes, one of Vladimir Zelensky's, <laughs> Baltimore, sorry, was sitting in the room when they were discussing bribing the Bidens, Joe and Hunter. Ukrainian President Zelensky has a top official who was sitting in on the meetings where they talked about the Biden bribes. Schweitzer suggests Zelensky is using this as leverage over the Biden regime for weapons and billions of U.S. dollars our dollars to be more specific but now i'll get on with the story the video that was suppressed immensely because nobody wants you to see it they don't want you to know how black and white this story is mr vice president how many times have you ever spoken to your son about his overseas business dealings i've never spoken to my son about his overseas business dealings. and so how do you know, how do you know? here's what i know i know trump deserves to be investigated he is violating every basic norm of a president. You should be asking him the question, why is he on the phone with a foreign leader trying to intimidate a foreign leader? If that's what happened, that appears what happened. Boy, that quote's going to come back and bite someone right in the proverbial behind because now an archer has taken aim at the White House. And this transcends far beyond what we disclosed to you last week with the GOP Oversight Committee, Chuck Grassley releasing the FD-1023 form, alleging that then Vice President Joe Biden was involved in a $5 million bribery scheme well beyond that storyline. Even though if you dive in, it was black and white, literally and figuratively. It cost $5 million to pay one Biden and $5 million to pay another Biden, but we're going beyond that story. What number are you up to now? How much have you identified of the money he's taken in from foreign we have more bank. We have more bank records coming in, but I, but we're going to exceed 10 million this okay. week. Right. And I think we'll get up between 20 and 30 million dollars. Okay. Not five, not 10, not even 20. We're going to get nearer to 30 million dollars. But who does this story focus on today? Hunter's partner. We've talked about him before. Devin Archer taking center stage again, literally, as they prepare for him to drop bombshell testimony on Joe Biden's involvement in everything 
to date. Well, I'm going to weave together all the details of this story, which you're familiar with, but may not have put them in the appropriate context. We're going to do that today so you know how intertwined and how important this testimony coming this week is. As I hope you know, my name is Justice, and I can't thank you enough for being here today. If you haven't subscribed to Lisa's channel, please just take a second to do that. If you haven't subscribed to mine, she'll put a link above. Most importantly, if you haven't joined us at Restricted Republic, you know to get there today. Don't forget about discount code INDEPENDENCE. And if you want something a little bit more lighthearted, don't forget to get to we'reforkedup.com. Lisa Haven and I created this, our escape from the news. A thank you to our audience for all you've done for us. We just put up our newest video this weekend. Come and enjoy it with us. Have a smile on us. Have a laugh. There's nothing more enjoyable for us than sharing our dinner with you. Give a laugh. Give a smile. And isn't that important with the news we get today? Again, that's we'reforkedup.com. We'll put a link above. Hopefully, you'll get there. But let's get back to this story. Man on your screen, none other than Devin Archer. Photo I am sure you are very familiar with. Well, this is all now going to hit center stage. Hunter Biden put then VP Dad Joe on the phone with business associates at least two dozen times. Ex-partner Devin Archer to testify in front of the committee. Of course, he has denied that multiple times. I do want to put into context Devin Archer has been sentenced to a year and a day in prison for the fraudulent issuance and sale of more than $60 million in tribal bonds. Oh, the ties that bind these folks together. But he's already been convicted. So he's not using this to try to turn over that testimony. Archer, 48 who is facing jail for his role in the $60 million bond fraud, is scheduled to testify to the House Oversight Committee about meetings he witnessed that were attended by Joe Biden either in person or via speakerphone. We find that is a very common thread throughout all these stories. When Hunter would call his father and introduce him to foreign business partners or prospective investors, did that impact policy? If it did, we have a major situation at hand. Everything in this story tying back most to Burisma. One such meeting was in Dubai late in the evening on Friday, December 4, 2015, after a board meeting at the Ukrainian energy company Burisma which was paying Hunter $83,000 a month as a director, although he had no skill, nor ability, nor talent to do so. Archer, who was also a director, the same Devin Archer we're speaking about, is expected to testify that after dinner with the Burisma board at one hotel, he and Hunter traveled six miles north to the Four Seasons Resort in Dubai, and they had a drink with one of Hunter's friends, and the story moves forward from there. Again, Devin Archer on your screen. We have two executives that they'll continually speak of, Pozarski and Sochesky. I hope you remember those names because we're going to repeat them several times. And they needed to speak to Hunter urgently. When they got there, they asked a simple question. Can you ring your dad? Soon afterwards, the two Ukrainians joined Hunter and Archer at the Four Seasons and... That's where the request came in place. Hunter then called his father to put him on speaker, placed the phone on the table, and introduced the Ukrainians to Joe Biden by name as Nikolai and Vadim. But again, they never discussed each other's business dealings. And one of those owners you see here on your screen has an even more interesting tie to this case because it is believed... He is the executive who has those recordings in his possession, the recordings of conversations between him and Joe Biden. They will note the context that three days after the request to speak to his dad, then Vice President, who was Obama administration's point man for Ukraine, was due to fly to Kiev to address the Ukrainian parliament known as the Rada on December 9, 2015, about the poison of cronyism, corruption, and kleptocracy. Ten weeks before the call, on September 24, 2015, U.S. Ambassador Jeffrey Pyatt had given a speech about corruption in Odessa in which he was going to target, well, the man on your screen for corruption. A call went through, allegedly, from Hunter Biden with them requesting to speak to his father, and out comes the famous videotape to tie this portion of the story together for you. They said, you have no authority. You're not the president. The president said, I said, call him. <laughs> I said, I'm telling you, you're not getting a billion dollars. I said, you're not getting a billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Well, son of a bitch. <laughs> got fired. <laughs> 
and they put in place someone who was solid. The investigation was magically shelved against a man who now has the recordings in his pocket. Immediately or shortly thereafter, a phone call was made in a meeting from Hunter where they requested to call his father. That is how significant this testimony is. We know a lot of this now because the New York Post story outlined so much of it, but there was two executives weren't there. So we'll go down in this section. I looked at them and said, I'm leaving in six hours. Remember, I'm told you, if the prosecutor is not fired, you're not getting the money, he would brag. As Shokin's probe gathered speed at the end of 2015, well, they ratcheted up pressure on Hunter. And the emails on the laptop showed that. In an email to Hunter and Archer on November 2nd, 2015, that's how closely associated Devin Archer is here, one month before the speakerphone call, they explicitly demanded that they use their influence to close down the criminal investigation. Archer also expected to detail other speakerphone meetings in the testimony, including a dinner at the restaurant in Paris where Hunter wiped, whipped out his phone. <laughs> wiped out his phone. Freudian slip and put his father on speaker to impress prospective investors. I'm also aware, now we go back to Bobulinski, who also discussed this storyline. Tony Bobulinski recalls Hunter offered to get his father on the phone on the phone during a meeting by the pool at the Chateau Marmont in Los Angeles. I am aware of other Biden family business associates confirming that Joe would take phone calls from Hunter in the middle of business meetings and would weigh in via speakerphone, said Bobulinski who was shunned by the mainstream media, called many names. But now it's all starting to take a different form now, isn't it? Sitting with Hunter at Chateau Marmont before I first met Joe Biden on May 2nd, 2017, Hunter was adamant that his father takes his calls at any time, no matter what his lawyers say, or with gatekeepers like former Biden spokesman Kate Bedingfield playing interference. The American people do not fully appreciate yet the key role Joe Biden played in the Biden family global influence peddling is the claim made. Devin Archer to testify on that claim. And why? Well, Archer refused to comment, but a close associate said he is testifying because he believes it is his civic duty. He has nothing to hide, no revenge to enact, nor anyone to protect other than his family, and he feels he's been handcuffed by the absurdly bogus fraud case into remaining silent. In a, former, in a forum where he has immunity, he can at least start to speak the truth. Since news broke that Archer would testify before the Republican Control Committee, his family has been receiving death threats and warnings to keep your mouth shut. As we heard by so much of the whistleblower testimony, that too appears to be a common tie that binds. Hunter brought Bo VP Joe to dinner with shady business partners. Another one will come out. Cafe Milano also believed that Archer will testify on where they received the text. Dear Hunter, thank you for inviting me to D.C. and giving us an opportunity to meet your father and spend some time together. It's really an honor and pleasure. As we spoke yesterday evening, would you be great to meet today for a quick coffee? What do you think? I could come to the office somewhere around noon or so before or on my way to the airport. Thank you so much for all your cooperation. The man who sent that text, the other executive. This is a very tightly woven case with one of the executives carrying additional evidence. Burisma Boss, in alleged Biden bribe scheme, claims to have 15 tape conversation with Hunter, two with Joe, according to Chuck Grassley, as well as many text messages and two documents that the informant understood to be wire transfer statements, bank records that record payments to the Bidens were made presumably in exchange for Shokin's firing. In the FBI document known as FD1023, he is quoted as calling Joe Biden, you guessed it, the big guy. I hope that puts everything into a very neat bundle for you. But if you go to ask Joe Biden about the big guy, well, you start to understand why he is so sensitive when he gives an answer. President Biden, why did the Ukraine and FBI informant file a report you as the big guy, President Biden? Why is that term continuously applied? Why did I ask a dumb question? Why do you ask such a dumb question? Because we, the people, have the right to know the extent and the truth behind this story, because if it affected, well, our policy, 
Well, Maria Bartolomo said it best. If this is all true about a sitting president when he was vice president, influence peddling, accepting money from uh, foreign nationals so that he could turn around and, and, and make changes in policy uh, for America so he could pocket the money. If that's true, why isn't he impeached already? And if it's true that the FBI is doing nothing about it, why isn't Christopher Wray on his heels as well? Why is he not up for impeachment? Aren't we all asking that question? Well, I believe that hopefully they have so much evidence they are making sure that they gather it accurately before making the next step because they know how good the opposing side is at assuring everything is shelved quickly. A lot more to the story to come. Promise you we would continue to cover it. I've told you from the beginning this is much different than what we've seen in the past. It is extremely important you watch every detail we'll continue to bring it to you until next time we love you all godspeed and god bless justice knight signing out